Hey, we're back with Dave Javino, the DuPage County Office of Emergency Management holiday safety tips. Now we've gone all the way through November with all our safety tips. Why would December be so much different than November or actually January for that matter? They're all ice cold, icy, snowy months. Right, so in November we talked about uh, winter weather preparedness and of course that still carries over into December but in December we add in holiday safety because of you know Christmas, Hanukkah, other holidays that, that people are celebrating this time of year. There's different things we want people to keep in mind to have a, a safe and, and enjoyable holiday season. Like what? I mean, we do a lot of lighting now, of course, Christmas trees and lights outside and all that. Do we have to be careful about those kinds of things? Absolutely. You want to make sure that, for example, that if you're using uh lighting for outdoors, you're using outdoor lighting with, you know, wiring and everything that's rated for uh, outdoors for the extreme weather conditions and that type of thing. A lot of them say indoor outdoor. Does it matter? If it says indoor outdoor, then, 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 then that's safety. fine. Uh, but you also want to make sure, you know, indoors, for example, with, uh, if you're using a live Christmas tree, those, those dry out really quick. And you want to make sure that you're, you're keeping them uh, filled with water in the base uh, to make sure that they don't dry out. We see a lot of uh, Christmas tree fires uh, in December uh, from trees that have dried out and maybe uh, some type of problem with, with the wiring on, on the Christmas tree light. So, mm -hmm. you know, keep the trees watered. Uh, and, you know, when you, when you go out, go ahead and unplug, the, uh, unplug those lights. Uh, don't leave them on. I know a lot of people like to leave them on because it looks nice. And then they, you know, drive home uh, late at night and they see the Christmas tree lit up in the window. But, gosh, uh, this time of year, the, you see so many Christmas tree fires uh, because um, of, of unattended uh, Christmas trees with the lights left on and, and, and that type of thing. Other things we, uh, we look at in terms of holiday safety is a lot of people travel for the holidays. You know, they may go to be with friends or relatives out of town. And so you want to practice safety in terms of uh, when you're going out on vacation, uh, even for a summer vacation, the same type of things you, you do then. So let a trusted friend or neighbor know you're going to be out of town. Uh, hopefully you have someone that you could leave a, a house key with so they could check on things while you're gone. You know, mm -hmm. um, you don't want your pipes to, to freeze. So uh, you want someone to come check on things, maybe leave the the faucets dripping a little bit, for example. Um, you know, if something were to happen, you want someone to be able to access your, your house and to be able to look out for you while you're away. How about mail? What, what, what should you do about that? Yeah, with the mail, you can actually go uh, online now. It used to be you had to go to the post office and, and fill, fill out, out cards. the cards. Right. Yeah. yeah, but you can go to uh, the post office website and uh, request that they hold your mail. And you can tell them when you'll be back, and they'll either deliver the mail to you on that day or you can go to the post office to pick it up. So we encourage people to do that. You know, Also let the, uh, your newspaper deliverer uh, know that you're going to be out of town so that, or have someone get that newspaper for you so that people driving by your house don't see all these newspapers piled up, making it uh, very clear that you're out of town. And I imagine any kinds of gifts that are sent to you, be a box or a, a big pan or something, and you're not home, you should notify a neighbor maybe to be able to accept it, or if they see it, maybe pick it up and bring it into their house instead of sitting out there in view of whoever drives by? Definitely, and that, you know, it all goes back to like we talk about uh, month after month is really getting to know your neighbors so you can look out for each other and help each other because yes, you certainly don't want to have packages uh, left unattended for several days uh, at, a, at a time uh, out in front of your house. And uh, I would s suggest too, I don't know if we talked about that, but leaving a number with a neighbor where they can get a hold of you in case something, they need to get a hold of you or maybe even a backup number just in case they can't get a hold of that person someone maybe a, a relative of that person a daughter or son or something definitely you want people to be able to contact you you want people to uh, know if you're driving especially again with winter weather um, you know the route you're planning to take when you expect to arrive there that way if you don't show up someone knows to check on you knows uh, where, where to look for you and that type of thing well, you know, we had these huge storms that have come through uh, Illinois, terrible storms. And what about things like that? What can you tell us about what happened and, and what kind of protection? Those people didn't look like if they were in the basement, they, didn't, they weren't even protected. Yeah, you know, a couple of things with that. One is our, our office, uh, we sent uh, an emergency manager down to uh, assist as part of a, a mutual aid response team uh, to assist with, with those tornadoes. And uh, he, he saw a lot of, uh, of, of devastation and destruction. But, but one, one uh, interesting story that came out of that is there, there was a, a young boy, I can't, can't remember his age, either six or eight years old, who uh, encouraged his mom. He said, hey, the, the sirens are going off. We, we've got to go underground and seek shelter. But she looked outside and she said, no, the weather's fine. It's a clear day. We don't 
need to. And he said, no, in school we learn when the sirens go off to take shelter. Well, they took shelter and of course the tornado came through, they come back out of the basement and, and everything's gone. And so, uh, wow. you know, th those things, the things we talk about here, it really can save your life. So it's important to know that, you know, when, if you hear an outdoor warning siren that you need to take shelter, uh, the importance of having a NOAA weather radio so that when a warning is issued, you, you're aware of it and you take shelter. All, all those things, I think, really um, were underscored by, by what we saw down there. Well, what a horrific uh, Christmas they're going to have as opposed to a, a delightful, happy time. They're going through such agony with, with their experience. They sure are, but you know, we also saw the, the best in people from this in terms of, I mean, people from DuPage County and, and Illinois overall really stepped up, uh, helping to volunteer with the American Red Cross and other volunteer agencies that were down there as well as donating uh, goods and services. And really, uh, it, it was really uh, Im impressionable uh, to see all the people who, um, you know, poured out their support to help those folks who, who lost so much. What has the emergency management learned from, do they learn things from each of these storms? Do they pick up something that makes it more valuable information they have that they can get out to people? Absolutely. After each event, whether it be a training exercise or, an, or a real world event such as that, uh, there's uh, an after action report and improvement plan that's put together where they look at lessons learned. Mm -hmm. And right now they're still in the, the recovery phase, so it, it might be a little while before that's put together. But eventually that gets put together and it's actually shared with emergency managers all throughout the country oh, yeah. and I'm sure one of the things that'll come out is is about that story about that little boy that I mentioned because a lot of times we think you know we talk about emergency preparedness here every month and you wonder are people listening are people really you know taking action based on what we're saying and this is a specific instance where we see that yes that messaging that preparedness messaging really did save a life Wow in regard to helping these people out the do you suggest is it better to send money or is it better to send clothes or what's a good thing to do for them? It's always better to send cash do donations to uh, volunteer agencies that are responding such as the American Red Cross, the Salvation Army and others uh, because by sending cash it enables those agencies to purchase exactly what is needed uh, and they can also purchase it closer to the area so you, you don't have to uh, have the other uh, additional burden and expense of shipping. You're able to stimulate the local economy uh, that was affected by purchasing from uh, local retailers that, that were able to survive and um, you know to gosh so much logistics goes into clothing donations in terms of making sure that they're clean uh, arranging the sizes and that type of thing it's it's much better to uh, just donate uh, cash to a, a reputable organization so that they can um, purchase the exact supplies that are needed when they're needed H how do you know it's a reputable organization I mean the Red Cross of course we heard about and and what do, internally do they take all these funds and just use it on the storm that occurred there or do they take some of it and bank it for maybe another storm that might happen and they do have money. Do you know how that's distributed? You know, I do. With the Red Cross in particular, uh, people can either specify that we want this money to go specific to uh, people affected by this particular disaster, or they can say, we want this, this money to go into the general disaster fund. Uh, you know, I know the Red Cross uh, in our area response, but to between three and five house fires every day that you never hear about, that, that never oh, make wow. the news. So a lot of people prefer to, to give to that type of fund um, because th there's not that outpouring of support for those uh, those people affected by fires because it, it's not on the news. Uh, but you know, you can go, there's uh, different websites like Charity Navigator um, that where, that ranks different charities in terms of you know what percentage actually goes to um, to the people mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to, to administrative costs, yeah. exactly. Uh, there's uh, you know United Way agencies, for example, um, such as the Red Cross, where if it's endorsed by the United Way that you know then that, that over a certain percent uh, is, is given directly to uh, direct service. So yeah, there, there are different ways and, and you definitely should do that. A lot of people um, you know, want to help, uh, but you want to make sure that you're, you're um, giving to the, right, exactly. to the right, to the right exactly. person. Dave, thank you. Thanks. You know, good luck in December, everybody. We'll be back.